Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and uh, ooh, welcome back to the channel. It has been a minute, and by a minute I mean almost a year to the day. It's like five days or so since I posted a year ago. But what I'm here to show you today, and what I'm here to welcome you back to the channel for, is another Dragoonie combo. We have some new things to discuss, and I have some new things to show you. Bestials came out in Darkwing Blast, and those are basically like true Dragoonity support in the most easy sentence of the word. They are level 6 dragons, Magnumut searches Remus, which searches Ravine, which is your full combo. Like, they're level 6 dragons to make a tum with. They are extenders in that right. Like, they are so fantastic for what they do for the deck, so I want to show you what an optimized Dragoonity Bestial combo looks like. Using just Remus, plus any discard, does not matter what the card is, getting you to two negations, Borload Savage Dragon and Dragoonity to Read Bear, plus Spheres, plus Branded Beast, plus a Search Bestial. So you have multiple layers and multiple levels of interaction and negation against your opponent. It's actually one of the cleanest ways that I've felt playing Dragoonity in years. Because the deck before was making huge boards, using as many of its extra deck resources as possible, and not really leaving much in the way of ability to counteract variants, uh, you know, you had to go through specific leaps and bounds to not lose to cards like Droplet and Dark Ruler no more, or Sphere Mode or whatever, but now the deck has so many different ways to actually address that because you have so many different layered interactions in your board. The Branded Beast and Bestial uh, and Spheres interaction by itself is huge, even if your board gets blanked by Dark Ruler no more. It's fantastic. Uh, like, it's like legitimately like one of the cleanest ways I've ever played Dragoonity. Ever. And the combo I'm going to be showing you is Remus plus Discard. It doesn't require any like abnormal bricks in the deck that you wouldn't already be playing in a Dragoonie deck. I've been seeing some people online that have been playing cards like uh, Clap Servant and Wyvern Burster, and I was testing those as well. Those cards are ultimately not worth playing. You can optimize the combo all the way down to the point where every card you are using is a core piece of your engine, with the exception being something like Branded Beast, which is that's something you're ending on, but every card has good purpose in the rest of the deck otherwise. Whereas, if you're playing other bricks in the deck in a less optimized form, then you're going to be getting into some interesting hand situations. But So that's what I'm here to show you today. Uh, sorry for the uh, lack of uploads, but that is going to be changing. I've been streaming more consistently over on my Twitch channel if you want to follow that and also see some you know, Dragoonity-based content because I've been playing a lot of Dragoonity on the Twitch channel recently. Link is in the description down below, or if you want to join my Discord server, link is down there as well. Tools are there for you to use, please use them. But with that out of the way, let me stop gassing, and I'm just going to show you the combo. This is the board that we get to off of just Remus plus a blank discard. It doesn't even have to be a discard of any specific variety, card type, or text. And also, because it is Remus plus one discard, it is also, by proxy, Ravine plus two discards, which is actually, you know, not bad for a one named card combo. And this doesn't use your normal summon, meaning that there's all sorts of layer protections you get into in terms of dealing with bestials, dealing with opponent's hand traps in any way, shape, or form. There's all sorts of different things that you have access to in terms of how you can take this and mold it around. You should definitely know how to do this combo in its barest, most you know, optimized, vacuumized form, but completely transparent here. I almost never do this combo in this exact form in actual gameplay because you are able to play around other cards once you add additional cards in your hand into the mix. But you do need to know this combo, and this is the best starting point to go for if you are going to be trying to actually play this deck this format, because you want to be getting the most out of the least. And this is what we, what I've basically come up with to get the most out of the least and also minimize as much variance as possible in terms of not losing to Dark Ruler or Droplet or whatever in terms of uh, that sort of stuff, or even Sphere Mode. Like... You can just play through all that sort of stuff. So let me show you how the combo is done right now. So you're going to start with Remus, and you're going to use Remus to add Dragon Ravine to hand, as you do. And then you're going to activate Dragon Ravine and use Ravine to discard whatever blank card you had to add Dragoonity Legatus from your deck to your hand. Now, because you control the field spell Dragon Ravine, you can special summon Legatus. And because you control Dragoonity name now, you can special summon the Remus from Grave next to the Legatus. Now from here, you can Synchro using the Legatus and the Remus to Synchro for six into Dragoonie Knight Gaederg. Now, Gaederg is going to use its effect to add and discard a level 4 lower Dragon or Winged Beast, and so we're just going to add Zephyros and discard Zephyros. Now, this combo is, you know, built around a vacuum scenario of you're not going to be dealing with, you know, interactions, opponents' cards or whatever. Obviously, like I said, you'll be making minor tweaks to it as you play it in actual gameplay. But, 
This combo in its purest form can theoretically lose to a Bestial because you're sending the Zephyros here. But if you do get Bestialed here, in fact I still usually send Zephyros first because if you get Bestialed, you can just normal summon literally any monster in your deck, make Romulus, and then you're able to you know still combo through that Bestial. Uh, and like the Zephyros bouncing ravine does not really actually matter to the grand scope of the like self-contained combo. But so you're gonna use the Zephyros, bounce the ravine, you're gonna take 400 damage. That is time in the round. And then you're going to link the Gaydurg and the Zephyrus into your Dragoonity Knight Romulus. Now Romulus on Link Summon is going to add a copy of Dragoonity Glow from deck to hand, which you are then going to use to search for your copy of Dragoonity Arma Mistleton. Now you're going to summon the Mistleton by sending the Romulus from Field to Grave, and then the Mistleton on Summon is going to equip Dragoonity Knight Gaydurg to it. Gaydurg cannot Special Summon itself normally like Phalanx and Coos can, but Dragoonity Glow can banish itself from Grave to Special Summon the Gaydurg from your Spell and Trap card zone in defense position. So you cannot get Romulus back with Glow uh, because you have to summon the card in defense position. Something you need to keep in mind. I have seen people make that mistake and think that you can do something like get a Link Monster back, but you cannot. But, so from here, the Durg is from a far, far away land called 2010 where cards were not hard once per turn. So we get to use its effect again. So we use its effect and we're going to add a copy of Dragoonity Coos from deck to hand and then discard it. So now we have access to a Tuner Engrave to start doing our Synchro Climbing plays. We have two level 6 dragons on the board, so we're going to overlay them into Hieratic Dragon King of Atum, and then you're going to use the Atum detaching either of them. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I just habitually uh, detach the Gay Derg because there are a lot of combos where you summon Red Med off this Atum and revive Derg. Uh, that's usually the more expanded out combos where you have other combo pieces in your, uh, in your uh, card pool as well, but in the most self-contained version of the combo, it doesn't matter what you detach because you're not summoning Red Med from deck here, you're summoning Samsara Dragon. And then from here, you're going to link the Samsara Dragon and the Atum away into Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres, and then we get to use the Samsara Dragon's Graveyard Effect. Now, if you are not familiar with this card, I do not blame you, but this is like the best card to come out for Dragoonity since the new support came out in Ghost from the Past 1, and this card came out about April of 2022 in Ghost from the Past 2. It got imported. It's been in the OCG for a couple years before that. This card, its on-field effect is irrelevant, but its Graveyard Effect is you can banish it to target a level 5 or higher Dragon Monster in your graveyard, add that monster to your hand, and then you can choose to normal summon that dragon in addition to your normal summoner set on the resolution of the Samsara Dragon effect if you want to. So we're going to use the Samsara Dragon and we're going to target the Mistleton Engrave because it's level 5 or higher dragon. We're going to add it to our hand and then we're going to use the Samsara Dragon's additional normal summon that we get to tribute summon the Mistleton over the Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. That is going to trigger the Spheres effect when it's tributed, and then that's going to be Chain Link 1 because it's mandatory, and then the uh, the Mistleton will be Chain Link 2 to equip a Dragoonity Monster from Grave to it, and we will equip the Coos that we put into the Grave. But So the Spheres will now resolve, and what we're going to get out of our deck is a copy of Star Liege Safer. Now this card is going to be used in a way to get us access to our Bestial line. Now you could use Ravine sending another card from you know your hand to grave to access Bestials that way, but that's no fun and that's not good card advantage. We're going to actually use Seyfert for multiple cards in the Bestial line, and so by getting access to it with the Seyfert you actually just generate more cards. So Seyfert we're going to use to send a dragon from our field or hand to grave. In this case we're going to send Mistleton, and we get to add a dragon from deck to hand that is the same level as the dragon or dragons that we sent. So since we sent the level 6 Mistleton, we can get a different level 6. That level 6 is going to be Bestial Saranir. And now from here, we get to Special Summon the Saranir by banishing a Lighter Dark from our grave. We'll just banish the Zephyros that's used because that's a once per duel effect and we're not going to be able to use it again. Now from here, we want to make an Atum. So what we're going to do is we're going to Synchro the level 2 Coos. We're going to still keep it as a level 2 instead of treating it as 4 with its effect. And then we're going to Synchro with the level 4 Star Leech Seyfert into a copy of a Dragoonity Knight Luin. This card is a Dragoonity Synchro that doesn't require non-tuner winged beasts. Uh, all of the new Dragoonity Synchros ever since Cybernetic Horizon are actually like that. They just require a Dragoonity Tuner and then completely generic non-materials. So Ascalon and a Reed Bear and a Gormfabir uh, from Blazing Vortex uh, do not require winged beast non-tuners. Uh, which is actually like huge because it opens up you to a lot more uh, advantageous non-tuner pool. But, so your Luin, when summoned, is going to equip a Dragoonie from Grave to it, so you're going to get the Coos back and you're going to special summon the Coos again. That basically just served the purpose of turning your Safer into a level 6. So, now we're going to use Luin and Saranir to make the second copy of Hieratic Dragon King of Atum, and then from here we are going to detach the Saranir, and that is going to summon the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon from deck. Now the Saranir's effect triggers when it's sent to Graveyard from anywhere, whether it's hand, field, or deck, 
And so that is going to send a Bestial or Branded card from deck to grave. And what we're going to do is we're going to use it to send the uh, Bestial Lubellion from our deck to the graveyard. Now from here, we're going to use Darkness Metal, and we're going to revive that card that we like to abuse, Dragoonity Knight Gaydag. And then we're going to use its effect once again. We're going to add a copy of Mist Valley Baby Rock from deck to hand and then discard it. Baby Rock's effect triggers, allowing it to be summoned. And now from here, we're going to start sculpting the ending board. Now we have not normal summoned here uh, by this point, and we also have not used the safer effect in the graveyard. We haven't used the Lobelian to summon itself. So even if we were to get like Nibiru super late in the combo, like right here, we're still able to normal summon ducks, go into a bunch of different stuff. You could still end on like spheres and a negate plus branded beast and a search bestial, uh, even through Nibiru. And that's even if your hand isn't that good. If your hand is really good, the Nibiru doesn't matter. You're just able to put up the exact same ending board, even through the Nibiru token uh, being on your board. But so from here, you're going to treat the Kus as a level four and synchro it with the level six Gator that's on the board. And you're going to use that to synchro into our Dragoonie Knight, a Reed Bear. Now from here, can't get nibiru and unless they have like nibiru Imperm or whatever. At that point, like, better have it. Got me. But so from here, what we're going to do is we are going to use uh, the uh, Starleach Safer Engrave. We're going to banish it to add a level 8 light or dark dragon from graveyard to hand. And Lubellion is a level 8 dragon, and it is also light. So we're going to add it to our hand, and then we're going to immediately use it, discarding it, to add a copy of, uh, that is the wrong card, <laughs> add a copy of Bestial Magnumut from deck to hand. We're able to summon the Magnumut by banishing another light or dark. Uh, we just banish a Tum or the Spheres, it doesn't really matter. Uh, like, they're just all free resources to be used in the grand scheme of things anyway, because they're graveyard cards. Summon the Magnumut, trigger its effect to search in the end phase, and then you'll synchro with these into Borlode Savage Dragon, making another piece of the ending board. Borlode Savage Dragon on summon will equip Dragoonie Knight Romulus to it, has two counters, so it has two negates. Now from here, Lubellion can summon itself from Grave by tributing a level 5 or higher Dark Dragon that's on the board. Darkness Metal, wouldn't you know it, just happens to be that. So you'll tribute the Darkness Metal, summon the Bestial Lubellion, and then Lubellion can use its effect to place a Branded Spell or Trap on your board face up from your deck. So we will uh, activate Branded Beast from deck. Branded Beast gives this uh, deck just a huge amount of layered protection because you have so many different ways to actually interact with cards. The deck just doesn't lose to a single Dark Ruler anymore because you have access to so many different layers of how you can interact with cards with the Druze Worms, the Bestials doing their thing, uh, the Beast being able to do whatever it does. The Spheres can still access cards from deck to also be forms of disruption if you want to play the cards to make that possible, all that sort of stuff. But so from here, I'm just going to link the two dragons that are left on our board, the Atum and the Lubellion. We're going to link those into Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. And then in the end phase, our Magnumut will resolve its effect and we'll search a copy of Bestial Druid's Worm if we did not already have it. So now from here, like, this is not a problematic, like, thing to get Dark Ruler on. <laughs> like, this board has so many layered protections and it has two negates on it, which are... Some, it's something you don't really see this format a lot, is decks putting up actual, like, negations. You're putting up interactions. They're not putting up super, like, uh, super uh, hard to navigate around inter uh, negations. Uh, the fact that this negates and banishes a card is huge. Omni negate. Uh, this being a non-target bounce is huge. Beast. Uh, this being able to summon bestials from deck uh, to trigger, like, Magnum for a resource loop uh, is huge. Beast being able to tribute Drew's Worm if you summon it. Um... Like, just Drew's Worm Beast by itself can interact with three separate cards because you could, like, uh, hit a graveyard effect your opponent's trying to use and then Beast tribute the Drew's Worm to pop a card and then Drew's Worm send another monster on the field to the grave. So, like, that that by itself is three, four, like, three, uh, you know, more reasonably two, but theoretically three points of interaction if the rest of your board gets blanked by something like Dark Ruler. And that's, like, huge. That's, like, something that this deck has never really had access to before. You had to search outs to Dark Ruler or generate outs to Dark Ruler, but now you can just actually just play the deck the way that it currently stands. And then keep in mind that, again, this was just Remus plus one card, so you have three other cards in your hand at the time of ending your turn, if this is the only thing that you were doing. So the combo is really strong for that, uh, for that regard. And again, you didn't normal summon either, so at any point near the end of this, you could just use Ravine, discard a card, add ducks, normal summon ducks, and go up into, like, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon to add that to your ending board. Uh, there's, there's no real, like, reason why you can't do that. Doing so plays into Super Poly on your Crystal Wing and your Reed Bear into, like, Garura, but, I mean, you could still make a point that, like, 
that still blanked one of their powerful cards because you still have so many other forms of interaction that you can deal with. And again, like, the resource loop this deck generates uh, with, like, how big and beefy the dragon lineup is, is actually, like, massive. Because Spheres can bounce a card, and then Spheres can float into Magnumut from deck, and then Magnumut adds from deck or grave to hand. So Magnumut can trigger on your opponent's turn, and on your opponent's in phase, you can just add Darkness Metal from Graveyard back to hand. And that's huge, because you can just summon it, uh, and then keep reviving Magnumut, which triggers to add more cards, or add the Red Med back. Like, you, you just keep cycling the cards around, and you just keep cycling around these big dragons, popping cards with Beast, tributing and uh, bouncing with Spheres, uh, accessing your Synchros uh, multiple times, even if they get outed. Uh, like, it's just super well layered, and I really like this deck a lot in the way that it plays with this uh, with this new dynamic. Uh, the deck has never felt so well-rounded in terms of how it can handle different variances, and so for that reason, I like this combo a lot, and I don't have to play cards like Wyvern Burster Collapse Serpent to get to this ending board, because I just sequence the combo pieces as optimally as possible to generate as many cards as possible, but that's basically the core of this combo, and you should take this combo and start messing around with it and getting to the different results that you can get to. Because once you start adding in other cards with text in your hand, then you start getting to some wild end points. And so ultimately, that is all I have to share with you today. I could have gone into other various combos, but I didn't want the video to get too long. I mean, it's already sitting around 15 minutes or whatever. I didn't want to take too much of your time showing other various things. If you want to see more varied Dragoonity combo lines and varied gameplay, I implore you, check out the link in the description for the Twitch uh, page where I live stream. In fact, I will be live streaming later tonight if you're watching this video the day it goes up, showing off more Dragoonity stuff, and I already did a full stream showing off other stuff, and the VOD is still up for that if you're interested in seeing that. It's a lot of content, a lot of things for you to mull through, and some gameplay involving Dragoonity, you know, showing various little uh, nuances and whatnot. But so, other than that, thank you for being patient with me. I will be getting more videos out sooner rather than later and i'm streaming more often so if you're interested in seeing any content that way then you're more than welcome to see, use the link in the description or like the video and subscribe and leave a comment down below here if you're interested in asking questions or seeing more videos but with that out of the way thanks for watching as always thanks for your time as usual and take care guys i will see you in the next video